Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Odafest Podcast, Season 7, Episode 2. I'm Jay. We've got Nancy and Angelo, as always. Hello. Hello. First off, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who came out to Odafest's Big Gay Anime Night in partnership with Calgary Pride at the Globe Theatre. It was a huge success, and we love seeing all of your cosplays and lovely faces, and it was just great to host a live event again. Uh, it's not the last thing we'll be seeing you at this month, actually, though, because we'll also be at Calgary Expo this coming weekend. That's uh, September 10, 11, and 12. Uh, so please come out and find us at our booth and say hello. I have one question about the big gay anime night. Was it big and gay or just big gay? It was large and, and in, in charge. charge. Damn. <laughs> you know me too well. You, yeah, it was... Very uh, sync. What can I say? Like, honestly, we haven't had a chance to do anything live in a while for I, good it's reason. It's been a long time. I, I wish I could have been there, though. It, it sounds like it was a lot of fun. So we had a cosplay contest. Oh, my um, God. The cosplayers that came out, um, fantastic costumes. Honestly, like, just... Really, really good. There was, uh, there, there was like characters from Genshin. A couple Ooh. of characters from I don't know which. There was this one show, but there, um, these two that are related in the show somehow. I don't know what. I'm that sorry, I don't know shows. every series ever, but like it was just like they did a really cool pair cosplay. So mm. I was like, very awesome. Um, there was a dragon maid. Oh who, my god! Uh, congratulations to them. They won. Um, it was actually a really cool costume. They worked on it with their father, I believe. So nice. Aww. And there was also a get in the robot Shinji Ikari in there as well. So nice, nice. wonderful. Yeah, which is like, I mean, it's, it's considering the fourth uh, movie just came out and all that. Like that makes sense. And I, I, I think Shinji's technically uh, he's bi, right? Uh, sure. I guess so. I mean, like, like he, they never say like explicitly in that show about anyone's like orientation. I think you don't have he to, will go but, I mean, with whoever pays attention to him. Yikes! That's Ooh. also kind Oof. of true. Ooh, ow! It's sad, sad but true. Ow! <laughs> that hurts. But I mean, but yes. as far as we can tell, I don't think there's a gender um, filter there. I guess. If no. We're to talk about it that way. Just being a organizer of events, um, even though honestly I didn't do that much, I just helped wherever I could. Um, the silent auction went amazingly. Um, we were able to raise uh, a good fistful of dollars. All of the folks who supported the concession stand at Globe Theater, we had Melon Pan, we had um, uh, Mochi, we had uh, peach drink, we had oh, milk tea, tea, Boss Coffee. Yes. Damn. You guys That's all the yeah. good stuff. And the and the melon pan was also, uh, we had a special melon pan that was like a cream-filled one, which was quite cool. It was I very tasty. Oh. As an organizer, and I've been around with Odafest for like 14 years, we counted last night because we could. And um, it's not a sense of like pride necessarily, but it's the idea that we're creating spaces where I would have loved to be able to attend something like if those things existed when I was 14, 15, you know, sort of in my prime weeb years, shall we say, you know, I would have been ecstatic. And, you know, I really hope people can appreciate that. I'm thankful that I get to be part of something special. Like, I hope people can make it out to the next thing that we do. As long as we can stay healthy and safe re with reasonable expectations of doing so. We're going to try on and do our best to get people together because there's no feeling like it. But there is something about in-person events that is super special. Yeah. 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 Uh, speaking of anime, we have a very heavy anime episode because we've just watched some. <laughs> we watched least. a whole several anime. A whole schwack yes. even. None, none of them complete. <laughs> no, we have watched. No. Several first episodes. We watched a cartload of first episodes. Even, and, and a surprise anime, too, that we didn't expect <laughs> to be seeing. But we'll talk about that one, too. Actually, I'll, I'm going to pop that into the... I'm going to pop that in the show just because of the list. Just because, because we, we can. can. So the first thing we watched, the first thing we watched was Vanitas no Kart. 
or the case study of Vanitas. And uh, it it started off really strong. It is a well-paced like, first episode. It's a great yes. first episode. We got to action very quickly. Yes. First half of the episode, we were already into some heavy action, I would say. Love yeah. it. Uh, there was intrigue in the characters. So it's it's about it's an anime about vampires, and the main vampire boy is looking for this like super special grimoire of vanitas. Uh, a, a vampire lady shows up, and and main boy, being a gentleman, does his best to like help her out, and then she goes uh, full full JoJo. She's got the 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 rose thorns and all. I gotta say, she chomper. Um, it was adorably gay, and I need more of it. Oh yeah, I need oh, yeah. more. Like this would have been right at home at Big Gay Anime Night. Ugh, Apparently, so adorable. Based off of the first episode, I think I would con- continue watching. Mars Red from the same season was actually a pr- no from the previous season was also mm-hmm. a, a pretty good vampire anime. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan at least level two. Ooh. Ooh. The art was good. The action was well paced. Yeah. Um, and the premise is like it's laid out at the very beginning. There's not too much like uh, they're there's, they're not trying to leave too much up to imagination. I'm sure there will be like small twists and stuff in the story, and that'll make it more interesting. But like you're not gonna you're not left sitting there like oh how is this gonna go like or why are we doing this kind of it, thing. So that's kind of nice. It does seem like an anime that just takes you by the hand and takes you for like a fun ride, something that's like not trying to take itself too seriously. But yeah. uh, just wants you to be like, this is what's going on. Strap in. So I think on that, we can very easily say, give it a try if you haven't already. Exactly. The next show is Sunny Boy. Sunny Boy is a, it's a bit of a paranormal, can't really call it isekai. It's almost isekai. Imagine, imagine going to school in another world, except the school comes with you. Yeah, like like it's an isolation thing more than yes. it is. There was a lot of like art design in terms of the art was not not stellar in a sense, but it wasn't necessarily terrible. It had its I don't style. Whatever yes. whatever animation frame rate they did this one in bothered 20, me. 20 I think it was like 24. No. I don't know. No. Uh, you don't think it was 24s? No. At, as far as that goes like with when it comes to animation, very few things are actually animated at 24 frames per second. Usually, you're right. anywhere between 10 to 17 frames per second on average. And this uh, one it was just, definitely like, on the slower end and consistently yeah. slower. Yeah. But at the same time, it was an anime where there wasn't much fast action uh, per se. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the fast action that was there was more done with special, well, special effects, uh, animated effects, and yeah things of that nature Mm -hmm. and then Uh, a lot of the like going back to like just the art direction uh especially in terms of sound design so there was almost no music in the first episode yeah setting the premise of it is because like essentially you have all these high school kids who are along with their school like teleported to another dimension where there's nothing else except them and the school uh like as as the physical setting so I guess they were trying to set like the idea that it's very isolationist and uh, like sort of excluded. Yeah, and and I suppose that carried through pretty well. I think the thing that bothered me most, coming from a sound design perspective, was how overly foliated everything was. There was God. there was an exceptionally so much uh, like th- there glass. was just so much focus on like. I moved my arm, therefore you hear right. my shirt rustling like crazy. Yeah. Foley is just sound effect mm-hmm. in the sense that like, if you see a horse galloping in a scene, then someone's making that horse galloping sound. It's not a naturally generated sound. It's an yeah. a- It's definitely sound. not something that's like, even yeah. on film, it's not something that's actually yeah. captured by the microphones when you're filming the actors. It's not to be confused with Mick Foley, who in... Uh... UFC 
Not UFC. That, WWF no, no. got okay. thrown through the cage in hell of a cell. Excuse by you, first of all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I was gonna stop you on the joke, but then you just stomped Carried all over through. it very no. poorly. No. Oh boy. So, your I am not editing shame. that out. That your shame is now exposed your for all to see. Hubris. My shame got pounded through a table in hell in the cell by Undertaker. Damn it, Angelo. <laughs> yep. But again, like the Foley noises are just like additive uh, sound editing, uh, which is like they still try to make it sound natural. It was pretty dead quiet. I I, wa I almost want to yeah. say like they were trying to make it have an uneasy feeling, uh, and they were doing that with the lack of the yeah. music, the background music specifically to accentuate the uneasy feeling. Mm -hmm. Either that, or maybe mm -hmm. whoever was uh, given the instructions for Foley wasn't told that there was going to be no mute background music and uh so the levels were the same expecting to be heard above music who knows who knows yeah i don't know but, but it, uh, it really bothered me stylistically it it almost leaned towards like uh ping pong or kimono zume yeah very ping pong and uh in a more surreal sort of uh mm -hmm. I, I i don't want to say action because again most of the action was not on the same level as those shows. Mm -mm. It was it was it was more like interpersonal drama more than action. Yeah, a little bit. But I did actually I enjoyed the character designs, uh, especially uh, Catboy. <laughs> I don't know something about his goofy expressions were so satisfying. But yeah, a lot of it sort of interesting. I mean, the storyline has a very derivative uh, Lord of the Flies storyline to it because of this isolationism. Like there's a there's a, you know, one group within the school is like, hey, we need to sort of control what's happening set, and set yeah, parameters set and rules, rules and guidelines. And then there's a bit of supernatural or not supernatural, like I don't know what you want to call it, but like the superpowers involved in that some of the population, some of the student population that's has developed superpowers and they're all sort of unique ones. I mean, it's not just like, hey, I'm flying or teleporting or shape-shifting. Not that we know of anyways, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's special. It's probably, it, it, it's not a bad first episode. It's not, it's probably not going to be a bad series, but you probably need to, want to watch that yes. and it was, it's definitely not for everyone it was severe whiplash going from vanitas to sunny boy yeah severe yeah. well i mean you, you could say that about a lot of the shows because we we get a lot of whiplash because of course nothing's in the same genre no. That's fair. and uh or the same production quality That's or whatnot fair. so i would say that like if i was in the mood for it i would probably follow through with sunny boy just to see what's going on you know what did not have much 2D at all? What, Angelo? Shiroi Suna no Aquatope. Aquatope of White Sand had so many CG fish. So Every single fish was CG. I actually don't think I, I noticed. I think the only fish that wasn't CG... Uh, the only fish that wasn't CG was like a fish head in a, in a, in a shrine a fish early head on. That was uh, given in um, offering, yes. Yeah, but... Uh, should I sit in an aquatope? So it it was actually pretty interesting. It's uh, it followed a, an idol girl who was quitting the idol agency. She felt like she couldn't cut it, even though she put in so much work. She she tried so hard and gone so far, but the in the, in the end, it didn't even matter. And uh, so she was just like, you know what? I'm going home. I'm gonna go figure something out. And she calls her mom, and her mom is like, yeah. Your your grandma and your grandpa knew you were going to quit, and they're happy for you, and they want to throw a party for when you get back. And she was like, wow, these butchers didn't believe in me at all. I'm fucking off to Okinawa. And uh, I'm going to go meet a fortune teller. That's right. She met a fortune teller. It, it was all over she the was, place. It was so all over the place. So much happened. There was this little gremlin that stole her hat and covered her in coral. Not in a bad way, but like there's it's not, not that much direction in this show. Uh, in the not like it's not it's not that it's bad. It gives off uh, Stardew Valley vibes. Really? Yeah. Mm, I disagree. You, you, you disagree. 
you disagree. You don't think that uh, passing out in Stardew Valley and then waking up with the little apple things all around you and like maybe covering you in corals and fish and whatever isn't the thing that would happen in Stardew Valley? No, because you wake up in your house. I know, and it says that the mayor brought you home. <laughs> but I will, I will say this show, like the entire first episode has been 100% wholesome. Like every person she talks to is like very wholesome towards her like the whole fortune teller thing i thought for sure she was gonna get scammed like it, they set it up so that she was just gonna get scammed by this fortune teller and then it turns out that they bond over like you know uh things that have happened to them in their lives career stuff yeah it, it's definitely a wholesome a i can't anime. really say slice of life it's not a slice of life it's be it's a little bit too magical to really give you that that right feeling, but it is very wholesome. Uh, the characters all seem to be like, "Oh, we'll be very happy together once we figure out our problems it's together." A kind wholesome of thing. So, finding yourself anime, from what I can tell. That's what it is. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. I like aquariums. I don't know if I really care that much about idols, but it's not exactly an idol anime. No, it's I'm okay an idol with anime it. about getting out of idol stuff. It's the anti-idol anime. Are you an idol? Go feed fish. Hmm. If you're not an idol, go fish. Go oh, feed okay. fish anyway. That one applies to me. I can do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you are the idol I am not. of our podcast. For certainly, Angelo would look better in heels than I. Damn right. They would make my legs look so good. Yep. You've got the calves for it. You and Jay both, actually. <laughs> you have noise calves. Leave my cows alone. (laughs) (laughs) Till the cows come home. What did we watch next? The next thing we watched was something that I was really excited for. I've actually watched the entire series myself. I've seen the memes. Uh, Shumatsuna Valkyrie, or Record of Ragnarok, which are two very different sentences between the English and the Mm -hmm. Japanese, but it's okay, because they're both good. Uh... So this is a manga that I've actually been keeping up with personally. I've really enjoyed the manga, and I was pretty excited for the anime. And uh, what I want to say about the anime is, first and foremost, it was a faithful adaptation of the manga, even if it wasn't perfect. Hmm. So, uh, to my understanding, it was a a Netflix original, Netflix-funded anime. It was their project, essentially from the beginning to the end. And uh, I I feel like they didn't give the budget that it deserved, or at the very least, they tried to stretch it out far too thin. Mm. Uh, It's got a lot of pacing issues, but that's not going to lie. That actually holds over from the manga. Mm. Uh, So that's not a good terrible. No, no, no. (laughs) It works a little bit better in the manga, but I want to, Yes, let's, because let's you can control the pace stage. at which you read. Let's set the stage. So the stage is the gods want to wipe out humans, but one uh, particular god, one uh, Brunhilde of Valkyrie, is like, y'all motherfuckers a bunch of chickens. You don't even fight for it. You just want to wipe them out. You don't even want to give them a chance. Oh, my God. You're y'all weak. must You're be terrified. Chickens. And uh, the gods are like, this bitch for real? And then they fight. The problem is, I was able to summarize that in 30 seconds. Uh, the first episode of Shumatsu no Valkyrie took 19 minutes to do that. And so in the first episode, you saw Thor and Lubu yeah. swing their weapons once. and hit once. each other once. That's it. Once. An yeah. anime about fighting, and there was one swing yeah. in the whole episode. I also got to say that uh, there's a, it's a flawed premise that gods would ever, should ever want to kill like humans, for example, because without to your be worshippers, fair, a lot of them you? were just really Nothing. tired of humans. There was like one god oh, yeah. I don't even remember. I'm real tired of humans, but I don't require... <laughs> them to make me maybe exist. gods don't the, need us to except make for them my mom. exist i don't know it, it, it's the rule of cool if you have if if you have the coolest humans against the coolest gods something cool is going to come out of it and as far as the manga is concerned that's great that's exactly what happens 
Uh, when it comes to the uh, anime, there's a couple c uh, criticisms that I would have personally. The animation quality isn't particularly up to uh, par. There's a lot of like reused animations or uh, fairly looping animations. Uh, it could have been better. Like I said, uh, memes have come out of this, and they're they're enjoyable. I guess I, that doesn't mean that I need to enjoy the the source of them. On the upside, they gave Aphrodite a hell of a lot more screen time in the anime than she had in the manga. I have okay. <laughs> that I that doesn't matter because I don't even need to see any more of her than I've already seen. And you see a lot oh, yeah, of yeah, you do uh, metaphorically and literally. So. Uh, yeah, I'm good like, with I that. I think but I'm in done the first, with the that first show. like four or five fights in the manga, she had like six or seven manga panels, and that was it. Uh, so this was the one that we watched in English because that's we could only yeah. find it in English dub, and we're, like that was fine. That wasn't really, it wasn't like the best, but it wasn't a huge problem. The the quality of I the English actually dub almost matched uh, the animation. I almost fell asleep. I, I actually was feeling that. I I also <laughs> felt that way. 10 or 12 minutes in, I definitely had a very long blink for a minute, and I was like, oh, all yeah. right. Yeah. We'll get back to it. So, yeah. 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 Like I said, yeah. not going to watch it. Fair. I'm good. That's not happened uh, in a while where, like, doing any of these, I think I've never actually thought that I might. But uh, some other ones are just really bad, and that's <laughs> like okay. That, that doesn't. Or XR. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, yeah, exactly. Bad doesn't mean boring. And it just remember means bad. that this is our opinions. That doesn't mean that you know we're passing judgment on these. I'm passing I mean, judgment. I'm just saying <laughs> this is our opinion. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily need to inform other people's opinions. Yeah, if you like the manga, I would recommend reading the manga. I think it's just fun for us to talk about stuff. If you really, really, really like the manga and you're really, really, really waiting for the next chapter, I guess you can watch the anime. But I mean, temper your expectations. It's it's okay at best. Mm. You know, you're really not selling it's, this it's to okay. me. I was really hoping for a lot no, more after seeing memes all over the internet, but no. It's I would recommend read the manga. I think Just we read can move the manga. on. <laughs> I think this is as terribly paced as the show was. <laughs> you know what show is not terribly paced? You know what wasn't long? Yeah, Nancy, but was very short. Ore Tsushima, which is a series of little, like, one-minute vignettes about a cat named Tsushima. A very it's judgmental cat, but that's to say cat. a yes. cat. Like, that's a okay, cat. the first episode that we watched was so short, that was the whiplash. It was about an old yes, man exactly. who uh, starts feeding the cat, Tsushima, and then... A wild cat of sorts. And then of he sorts. passes away, and that's the end of the vignette. That's literally it. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to be literally giving away the whole thing. And we, Nancy's already given away most of it because it's a one-minute show. But at the end of it, he's like, humans come and go and their houses, you know, fall apart. Meals and go. that's the way of humans and that kind of thing. And I'm just like, this got oh, my dark. God. And it was like within the span of a this minute. Is... So you're just like, wait, wait, yeah. what? Yeah, this old man is just like, oh, a nice little cat. I guess I could feed you. And then the next minute, you know, he's like, it, the, 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 it went, and then winter came and the man died. Yep. <laughs> that that was literally it. It wasn't yep. like a slow show of yeah. this man's health descending into a very poor state. It was just, and then he died. One day he went to bed and didn't yeah. wake up. I'm going to go ahead and say, like, we could have watched pretty much all the episodes. It, was, oh, it wasn't it was bad. It was not actually bad. I was vibing with it. I mean, the truth is, is that we also had other stuff that we had to watch. And we're on, like, you know. You know. But I would not not recommend it, necessarily. Ore Tsushima. It would have been perfect for Kibi. Or whatever that weird streaming service that died uh... in the middle of 2020 was. I don't know what I, you're talking I about. I saw ads for that on YouTube. I do know vaguely what you're talking about. Is it, is it, is it like a Hulu or or? So there was this uh, streaming service called Kibi or or how do you Kibi or something how like do that? You spell it? I, uh, Q U I something Q I like or something like that. And uh, it was a streaming service that the people behind it. Want, uh, dumped billions of dollars into developing it. Uh -huh. They bought a bunch of like freaking uh, 
uh, licensed properties for it. And the whole purpose was that it was more for short form content. Yes. That was in shot in profile so that you could watch on your phone when you're like in the so line like at a grocery TikToks. store. Or, I Googled so like TikToks, it, something like but that. But with better production yeah. value. Quibi was exactly. an American short form streaming platform that generated content for viewing on mobile devices. It was founded in LA in August 2018. And the service raised $1.75 billion from investors. It launched in April 2020. So, uh, yeah, that tracks with the and beginning of the August, pandemic. And by August, it was dead. Yeah, it died in December 2020 after falling short of its subscriber projections in January 2021. The content library was sold to Roku uh, for less than $100 Woof. million. That's yep. quite the fall. Yeah, honestly, one minute little anime clips like this would have been ideal for what they were trying to do if they were an okay service if they, if they weren't dumb and if they lived yeah. mm -hmm. if you want to watch a big fat cat be a cat not even like a minute in the life of a cat 10 episodes do it it's cute yeah it's like it's like having a cat but in anime form if you if you didn't want to pay the pet deposit it's the next best thing if you didn't want to pay for pet insurance and food and uh, uh, licensing, Honestly, how similar was medical Shima bills. To like, say, your cat, for example, Angelo. Oh, damn near huh. identical. Like, like the difference is that that Tsushima mm -hmm. is like an old man, whereas mm -hmm. my cat is an old lady. But like the judgment, the attitude, you can feel the judgment. The, everything was very literally real. identical. Like they they did a damn good job in like writing the attitude of this cat, writing the character of Tsushima. I mean, that's a good thing. They know mm -hmm. their subject matter, right? What you know. It is it is an anime for cat owners or people <laughs> who wish they had a cat. All right. That's that's a good thing. That's fair. Like, I'm, I'm saying more good things about Ore Tsushima than I am about Shimatsu yep. Valkyrie. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them I actually Yoink. like. <laughs> uh, we'll get to uh, the last of our previews, which was uh, Cider no Yu no... Ni, oh my god, I'm gonna, I butchered it already. Cider no yu ni kotoba ga wakiagaru, which is words bubble up like soda pop. Uh, this is a movie. We didn't watch all of it. Uh, we will, and then maybe we'll talk about it again later, but we just, we only had so much time and we had to watch a bunch of episodes. Lots of excuses me to and, be had. Uh, but it's, me and Dio watched this on a date night a little while ago, yeah. and it's adorable. It's very cute. Uh, the the art style is very uh, pop art colors, sort of bright, bold, Flat. Uh, fairly yeah, fairly simple line art, but not in a bad way. Um, like you know, decent animation as you would normally expect from a movie. Storyline seems fun. Like, didn't really get into it, unfortunately. Not in the interest level side, but like, we really didn't get. Into we the watched. Of the story. Yeah, we watched we about twenty in the minutes. Trajectory phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, I could see why it would be just a good movie. It's on Netflix, right? Yep. So the the premise of the movie is that you've got this shy boy who really only feels like he can express himself through haiku and uh, uh, a cute girl. Who's, who's worried about her teeth. She's got like braces. She's got like buck teeth. She wears a mask to cover she's it She's known she's for like, her teeth. Oh my apparently. God. People aren't going to like me if I have fucking teeth. Yeah. What am I going to do with my life? And then they, through circumstances, they bump into each other and then they meet up. And uh, then it's, it's, a, it's just a cute romance mm -hmm. from there. And it's really good. It's really cute and wholesome. Definitely recommended if you like sappy, cute uh, love yeah. stories. It's great. I would say, I don't know how Nancy feels about this. Angel's already seen it. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I'm getting vibe-wise, though, is that nothing really stuck out to me. No. Does that make sense? No, nothing would stick out yet. I feel like by this point, by the point where we stopped in the film, it was almost slice of lifey. In, in, in it, a very, very like, cute, wholesome, and uh, we're growing up kind of way. And sure. yes, so like, you know, having an opinion of an entire film by the what were we at, like 25 minutes? Uh, Somewhere in the 20 minute mark. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, that far into a movie and you're like, OK, this is cute. The 
the aesthetic appeal mm-hmm. is definitely very pop art. Like the colors chosen are, they are slightly oversaturated, extremely oversaturated. I would say yeah. that they're they're bright, bright cheerful, colors, peppy, but they're actually very desaturated. Like they're not saturated in hue. I think you're gonna have to rewatch it because. There is definitely some scenes like they change it every now and then, but there is definitely there's, oversaturation. There's a in character a lot of those who is the the anime version of Bart Simpson in there. <laughs> you know a what? You're bit. not wrong. A little bit, yeah. Like especially given wrong. that chase scene that happens, that's very Bart. Simpson. Oh yeah, and that chase scene is really just the a studio flexing. Uh, because it is like it, it's a slice of life anime, so they don't really get that many chances to put in like some fast mm-hmm. speedy action. And so they were just like, you know what? We're going to we're going to draw this guy doing some crazy bullshit on a skateboard and it's going to look amazing. It's really not going to add anything to the film and it's not really <laughs> going to happen again afterwards. But you know what? Let's fucking do it. Basically. <laughs> and like it was well animated. It, it, it's it is. It's a well animated uh film. It's got a fantastic art style. It's very consistent. Uh, Much higher frame rate than some of the other things we've been watching. After the introductory portion. But again, that's movies. After yeah. the introductory portion, it does get you into the meat of the film, like the the quest, as it were, of the film. What is the driving force for the characters to interact with each other? And I noticed the 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 one turning point way at the end of the movie was kind of foreshadowed, not exactly more focused on, a little bit displayed for people on the rewatch being like, yes, this was in fact there the entire time. And I see you. I see it. But uh, it, it, it's just a very nice, very nice movie. You should watch it. Mm-hmm. I, I will finish watching it sometime for sure. Uh, something yeah. we do need to set up this watch night for sure is our bonus anime, which we did our not expect anime. to see. Do you want to tell the story of how we accidentally stumbled upon this? We were trying to watch Ore Tsushima. And for whatever reason, uh, when we pulled up the episode one of Ore Tsushima, it was something completely different. Instead of being one minute long, it was an hour long. And we were like, what the hell's going on? And then we watched. And it was like some weird delinquent kind of anime, but different. Uh, It it was rotoscoped animations. The faces were Stone um, cold. No, 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 no. Before before we get into that, I want to say that almost all of the art was actually really good. Uh, like like they used watercolor backgrounds. The animation again for like all the humans and was all rotoscoped and well done. And the only thing is, is they chose these really simplistic faces <laughs> for all the humans. And by simplistic, we mean like downright scuffed yeah elementary we're talking grade one level drawing of a face pretty much except adjusted that it's like still well balanced like you know things aren't the uh, one eye isn't three centimeters above another one kind of thing (laughs) on the whole everything actually looked pretty good and we found out we watched enough of it because it was interesting enough (laughs) That to, to to get to the title screen, which is called Angaku, which is really just Japanese for music club. Yeah. But we haven't seen any music, but it has a good soundtrack. Yep. It has a good soundtrack. It bops. It does. It's a, apparently a musical comedy movie that came out in 2019. It had a bit of a, like, Beavis and Butthead vibe. Yes. And uh, the comedy was very deadpan. It was like, oh, the, the three delinquents are like, ugh. Oh, this this school is talking shit about us. We'd better go over there and fight them. And then they're walking down the street. They're just like casually strolling. And main boy is like, "Hey, other guy, do you know where the school is?" And he's like, "No." How about you? Do you know where the place is? Nope. All right. Well, guess we're just out for a walk. Yep. And then the next and, day, and they're like, "Oh, let's go into this fight club and see if they know yeah. what it is." <laughs> And then they just sit in there watching other guys yeah. box. And the next day they go they go back to school. And then it's just like the girl who's down on sort of what they do as delinquents or whatever. And she's like, how did the fight go? We didn't fight. We didn't know where to go. And she's like, are you serious? Everyone knows where that school is. I'll tell you about it. To like one of the guys. And then the guy's like to the main, who's the, obviously the leader of the group, is like, hey, do you want to go today? No, I'm busy. 
and it's like, just playing video games. Yeah. It wasn't even like I'm busy. It was like, nah, yeah. I'm not interested. Yeah, it was just like, oh, okay, like that's fine, I guess. But it's like it pulls you in. There's a weird charm to it. Uh, it definitely has Beavis and Butthead vibes, Mike Judge created vibes. Essentially, um, it definitely takes some cues from American Cartoon, which is like. It's weird. We didn't watch too much of it, about maybe 15 minutes at most. But I was also going to say, like, go find it. Like, I would recommend it. We're we're sort of excited to set up a, a, a watch night that we can get together and actually finish up on this one because it just seems fun. It's very surreal. Oh, surreal's I not... I want to see it. No, it's not surreal. I, wa- I want to see main boy pull out the macaroni fist. <laughs> macaroni it's not, fist. It's the not surreal. Fist. It's absolutely a slice of life kind of feel to it. You sure? Yeah. Yes. So far, I mean, we didn't watch that much of it. You need to go look up the definition of what surreal is. It's not surreal at all, but it's very much a comedy, like deadpan style. There's the and, and it has a oh, bit yes. of a slice of life. I do kind of wonder where the rest of this hour goes, though, because I mean, it's like an hour. It's something something will either change and like really switch up the pace and the tone, yeah. or it will be the same thing all the way through, and maybe maybe the director has purposefully not told a story and kept it very slice of life and like sort of left you with that lingering oh for sure feeling or or you're just gonna be like what did i just watch at the end of this i'm also going to say that i am in no way uh going to look up what this is about other than what we know yeah i don't want spoilers. <laughs> yeah, i don't want to know anything more i need to watch it sort of uh, uh whole yeah wholly You know, it's always interesting as well to see because like watching American cartoons, the artists and and creators do take influence from anime, but it's not that often that we see the opposite where it's like there's definitely influence from Western cartoons in this one show. It's a nice, it's it's a cool uh, flip side of the same coin kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, music was cool. Art was baffling (laughs) in a good way. Yeah, the character design was definitely a little yeah. bit baffling, but you know what? You get used to it after 15 minutes. It's true. I mean, when it's it, when it's self-consistent, you can vibe. Mm-hmm. Yes. But and like at first impression, you're just kind of like, what am I watching? Yeah. And it's just called Ongaku, which is, again, music club. No idea what it means in this context because we haven't, other than the background music, I haven't even seen a musical instrument <laughs> in the show. A guy was playing darts and Maybe video. Maybe a musical games. instrument is the macaroni fist. I think ongaku actually just means music. I guess it only means music, yeah. I think the full title was ongaku our sound. Mm. I mean, if the title of the translation, the interpretation means our sound, then it is sort of more like we just march to the beat of our own drum. That might be the idea behind it. Maybe. Honestly, I don't know. Don't want to speculate too much. Already have because that's the kind of brain I have. That's the, uh, that is what we offer to you, the people. Uh, I don't think we have too much else uh, for this episode. We've definitely gone through a lot of anime uh, from beginning to end. Anything else, you guys? Read the manga. <laughs> Are you in the manga is always better camp? No. Good. It's highly, it's but highly speculative. Read the manga. All right. Read okay. the manga. All right. In that case, <laughs> we're going to call it a show and we will catch you next time. Thanks for listening. See you at Calgary Expo. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye-bye.